All right, the show is a weekend deal, and I told you earlier that we have our guest joining us. He is seated with us at the moment. He is the Vice Chancellor, National Open University of Nigeria, and of course, we all know him as Doctor or Professor Doctor Abdallah Oba Adamo. You know, I keep wondering if you had a relationship with the Igbos. The fact that I'm called Oba indicate that there is a common linguistic pattern among all Nigerians. In House of Lani language, Oba means father. Father? Yeah, okay. and it is normally the name given as a nickname to somebody whose original name is meant for an, an elderly person. Hmm. But in Igbo language, it means uh, wealthy, uh, somebody who is rich. So when I found myself as a youth kofa, at Ekorazu Girls Secondary School in Omokurika in Ahia, the MBC local government. Oh, that's deep. <laughs> in 1980, I I just melted right in. I, people called me Oba, and, and they thought I'm Igbo. I look like an Igbo, right? Oh, okay. Do, yeah. Sure. I don't look I don't look like the typical profile of a Fulani. I'm a Fulani, but I don't look. You know, the, the Adam Shingi that a Polani is a tall person, light skin, copper hair, long nose, thin lips, and all that. And I'm opposite. So people tend to look at me as an evil. And I love it because 40 years later, after I, I had finished my NYSC last year, I visited the same school again as a vice chancellor. And I gave five scholarships to indigent girls. Wow. And I insist that those girls must be purely indigent. Indigent in the sense that they can't afford to go to school, but they have all the grades. Uh, I went back to the same school. It's now back with the missionaries. It was initially a missionary school, but then it was taken over by Mbakwe government. Um, but then now the missionaries, missionaries are taking it back. And I decided to go back and see it. And so I, I, I love it. I have a beautiful experience in that place. It's good. It's good. I wish all of us can do that for our alma mater. But yes. I am going to uh, get back to you on your, you know, your career as an educationist. Okay. You actually started a long time. I didn't even know that you did your, t your service within the school environment. But then I I'd like to know, sir, the educational sector is, you know, uh, ridden with a whole lot of problems in Nigeria. Some say that uh, about 60 million Nigerians are not educated, they are illiterate. Some say 39% of us. I really don't know. But how do we move away from this problem, from funding, uh, poor facilities and all that? Now, I am probably the least person you should ask that question. The real thing is because I tend to flow against the tide. The tide is that government is not doing this, government is not doing that, and therefore the responsibility lies with the government. But government has a responsibility to other sectors also. You cannot go to school if you're not healthy. So government has a responsibility first and foremost to making sure that everybody is healthy. You cannot go to school if you're hungry. So government has a responsibility to making sure that you are properly paid. So if I were a government minister or if I were in charge of government, my priority would be health and, edu and food and then education. And that leads to the same old argument about the quality of education in the past because there were less demands. There are few people, less population, and therefore the demographics were very easy to handle for the resources that we have. And so it's a reverse situation. We had a lot of resources at that time in the 60s, 50s, 60s, and 70s, and few demographics. Now we have more demands, most, more, 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 more students, and as a result, government get the blame for most of all these things. Um, but my view is that there is a difference between knowledge and education. Okay. What people tend to emphasize when you look at all these figures is education. Yes. And education is a structured form of a process in which there's a curriculum, there are targets, there are times when this thing will be completed, and there are outcomes of those targets. Nine credits, five credits, and so on. And that desperation to get nine credits is what leads to miracle centers, where you have kids who pay 38,000 naira, and then the next thing you know, they have been given a certificate that says they have nine credits. We all know this is what's going on. 
So my focus really is not so much on education as a structured process, but on learning as a self-motivated activity. And that is why now... Hi, Shana, we're just discussing about vocational schools, right? Yes. You want to pick it up from there? Yeah. Well, uh, you talked about earlier about the influx of uh, students in the tertiary institution these days compared to uh, the olden days, like in the uh, 60s, 70s. And then, like, the educational sector, especially the federal and state tertiary institution, is plagued with uh, issues of strike, examination malpractices, and also sex for marks as well. How do you think we can curb this? Well, government will always tell you that it is funding as much as it can. And that has always been the standard response. That government is doing as much as it can in order to provide funding for the schools. Uh, through raising taxes, uh, federal revenue service generating all these, TED fund is also helping uh, a lot and all that. But we are not talking about infrastructure. Mm. We are talking about learning. Mm. We are not talking about education. We are talking about learning. We are talking about a, a process in which somebody becomes prepared for the modern life, for the modern way life is all about. So you have to shift the responsibility from the government and push it to the individual. Yeah. Look at it this way. What we are dealing with now is the what we call Generation Z. Generation Z are, are children who are born after 9-11, the American disaster. Yes. And these are children who are Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, WhatsApp. And their knowledge base, their ability to search for knowledge, acquire knowledge, and know what is going on around the world is far, far much better than what we had in a structured, normal, regular system where you are expected to cram a particular test book mm -hmm. and pass a particular examination. Mm -hmm. Now you don't need to pass an examination to know what is happening in Switzerland. Nobody's going to ask you because it's already there. Knowledge has become part of the everyday commodity. And that's exactly what an educated society is all about. Developed countries did not develop as a result of having people who was first class or second class. I mean, Bill Gates, Mike Zuckerberg, uh, Don Gote, and all these people don't have first class. And yet they are, they are the ones who are running the economies in, the, in their countries. So the movement has to be away from education-based economy to knowledge-based economy. And that knowledge-based economy is basically individual. It's, it's what an individual can do. How the individual, individual can be empowered to use the knowledge that they acquire in a very responsible way that makes the society move forward. Yes, yeah, so I just said something that got me thinking. Uh, I've always been on, of the opinion that um, a basis or emphasis should not be on certificates, and that's just what you echoed now. That's right. I, uh, and, and I don't know how we're going to be able to drive that in, because it's the emphasis on the education that leads to examination malpractice mm -hmm. and um, uh, less attention paid to mm -hmm. people's talent and skills. That's right. Meanwhile, those are what actually would develop a country. I know the likes of Michael Jackson never really went to any school, That's right. you know, formal school, so to speak. But picking up from what you said earlier, you talked about uh, the um, Z children who are internet uh, savvy at the moment. I'm wondering, I was thinking that when technology advances, we should, you know, move in alongside with it. What is the educational sector doing? I know why I'm asking that you're the vice chancellor of um, Open University, and I know you're, you're digitally inclined in that place. I'm also a student anyway. So <laughs> I'm also a student. So I know that. I don't know who my lecturers are. But I do all my TMAs, I write my exams, and I get my results when that's it's right. time. That's right. So uh, that's internet. Uh, but for me, that's actually at the lowest ebb. Uh, what can we do to export the same internet, you know, to the wider society, to the public schools, especially with these children of Jade's uh, age? Well, what, 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 the, what the, the plan is to come up with open schools. The concept of the National Open University of Nigeria is that you learn at your own pace, at your own place, mm. at any time, using technology. And like you said, you're a student. You don't even know who your lecturers are. I don't. The only time you actually see your lecturers is when you come to do your defense or when you come to do your uh, um, uh, business plan for your entrepreneurship program. But otherwise, everything is 
self-motivated. You have the technology at your fingertips and you use that technology in order to acquire. And now we are moving into virtual learning where lecturers will come and teach virtually and you have avatars. Lecturers will become avatars where they will be able to teach. So I if we about the radio training too. That, that, that's right. Okay. So if we can shift down that to the lower levels of education, mm. because our assumption is that only those in the universities are capable of understanding that technology. But the radio but not program anymore. was actually for the secondary and primary. The Domi, the Domi they had recently. Well, they, they had a radio and television. How many people are going to listen to a radio? But if they have their own handset, they have their own smartphones, and you are reaching out to them through their smartphones. And as you know, that these generation can never afford to be away from their phones at any given time. Mm -mm. No matter how old they are. And they start from as, as young as nine o'clock, uh, nine, nine, nine mm -hmm. years of age. And then they move up to about 22, 23, and so on. So you have a spectrum around which you can now filter in and put in the kind of material that you want to. Pakistan is doing that. So that they are using, like, often university, but often university for secondary schools. So instead of all the time to say we will reach out by radio, use video, use media, because the media is now a commodity. It's just like Maggie Cube, okay? It's like Omo, it's like any other commodity, because no Generation Z can afford to live without their phones. So the best thing to do is follow them. They have the phone, they have the, the means of listening to you. Follow them up. So you have your own radio stations, and then you have your TV stations. And then you have channels where students can just simply, they have applications they can download, and then they can have access to all this education. What National Offering University of Nigeria, for instance, is thinking of doing is, we want to convert all our study materials into audio books. Because we know that people don't like to read. They find it tedious to read, so, but they can listen. So you, you, you listen to your Snoop Dogg, you listen to your Tupac, you listen to your Jay-Z, no problem. You also listen to your lectures. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, um, there is also an I uh, issue of uh, entry into universities. Like, it's tedious these days. You find that students, or prospective students, actually find it difficult to go to enter into a uh, tertiary institution. And eventually, if they do, they are not offered the courses they uh, want to study. What's your take on that? Maybe they are not qualified for the courses. If you are qualified for a particular program, there is no reason why you should not be provided that particular program. People who apply for a particular program normally find that they are not qualified for that particular program. Somebody wanted to become a doctor, but he has like what, three or four or five credits. He takes jam and he has only about 180 but he still wants to become a doctor, yeah. so it becomes impossible. So universities are tied down by quality control mechanisms. They have to make sure that whoever gets in there deserves to get there yes, and deserves to get the best. We have seen too many times where people didn't qualify and they got to still read the course. I don't mm. know how that what happens. They are not qualified and they still go on they with the course? They go to read it. Like somebody who is not qualified, you know, makes uh, maybe 20 to 20, uh, with regular uh, EC and all that credit in work, and the person goes to read medicine. Meanwhile, the cut of mark actually was like 280. That's right, and I can it tell happens. you that, that it happens. It happens. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but I can tell you that that person rarely finishes the program. Oh, really? Yeah, they rarely finish the program <laughs> because they know that they don't end up getting there in the first instance. All right, just before we leave, we have. Um, I want to say new minister, but he was there before. He's old back new. in time. Old new minister. That's right. <laughs> okay, that's in the person of uh, Adamu. Adamu, that's the minister of education. Of course, we have uh, a maker for the state. Mm. I'm wondering, you are in the system. I know the minister is has a background as an accountant, but you are in the system. Had been there for a long time, like you said, since your service days. I'm wondering, what do you have to proffer? You know, for him to ensure that he succeed and takes Nigerian education uh, uh, domain to the next level. Actually, it is he who offers to us. It is his humility, his humbleness, and his understanding of the Nigerian social culture that enabled National Offering University of Nigeria to succeed. Hmm. Without Adamu Adamu, 
I'm telling you, the National Open University of Nigeria would not have been where it is now. Oh, really? Definitely. That's cool. So it is not a question of accountancy or education. It's a, que a question of dedication and commitment. And he's a dedicated, committed to education. And he had always been like that. So we are always grateful to him because without him, there would be no noun. I can tell you that. And I'm an insider. I'm the vice chancellor. So I know what I'm talking about. Mm. All right, the show is Weekend Deal. I've been talking with the n Vice Chancellor, National Open University of Nigeria, in the person of Professor Dr. Abdallah Oba Adamu. Thank you very much for coming on the show, sir, again. You're very um, welcome. Okay. No nation can achieve economic, social, political, and cultural prosperity without a sound and functional educational system. Education changes the visions and perspectives of individuals, enhances critical decisions and improves democracy. Indeed, education is paramount and necessary requirement for all-round development. But unfortunately, education in Nigeria is bedeviled with numerous problems, especially the unemployability of tertiary graduates. The rate of development in Nigeria has been on a very slow pace and this has been as a result of the low rate of production. Consequently, this has been adduced to the incompetence of recent tertiary graduates. Even the National Open University of Nigeria is not spared from this attack, as most people often consider it as their last option after regular institutions have failed them. We also have this feeling that this is not a proper university. But over the years, Professor Jegede and then Professor Tenebe and myself have created a credible platform where we are suddenly now not only are we just like any other university, but it is wrong to call noun just like any other university. We are superior to any other university. Because if you pass very well in noun, it is because you work very hard. If you fail in noun, it's because you don't work. In other words, we, we shifted the paradigms of learning process. In a, in a traditional learning environment, it's the teacher who controls and dictates the flow of learning. Not in noun. In noun, it is the learner who dictates the flow. So people now are looking up to us. And we have reached a stage where we have to tell our council that we will no longer accept sabbatical, uh, adjunct, part-time, contract appointments. There are three major challenges currently facing the education sector in the country, which apparently are the reasons for the poor performance of the subsector. These challenges include incessant lecturer strike resulting in massive brain drain, lack of teaching facilities in schools and poor funding. At the time we started up this university, most of the staff of, I mean most of the students who enrolled in the university were government workers and therefore they are adults, so they don't really need NYSC. But when the universities introduced post-UME, you have a lot of young people who could not get into the university. You get a young man who sets for uh, jam many times and he still fails, or he passes jam but then he fails UTME, or he, he, he passes jam but does not get enough scores for UTME and so on. The next thing we know, we have a massive influx of such young people into the university. Before we had a population of, like, when we started, we had a population of just about 50, 60 maybe up to about a thousand. But right now, 2019, we have 536,000 students. And the vast majority of them, as many as about 60% of them, are all young. So the reason students don't do for NYC is because that issue has not been regularized about what we are, whether we are a university or not, because we were listed as a parastatal under the Ministry of Education. Um, just like MBTE, NTI, and all the others, not under NUC. Many employers are quick to state that the quality of Nigerian graduates is simply a reflection of the society. How do graduates of National Open University of Nigeria fare in the labor market? Noun graduates are superior to the graduates of any other universities because noun graduates knew that they did it themselves. They walked themselves. I have letters from, from students who have failed and they keep saying there is no way I could fail this course because I know how hard I worked. That is the level of confidence they have on themselves. But they say, well, 
No matter how hard it works, you works, apparently don't understand what you are teaching. That's why you fail. So we have absolute total confidence in our students and their superiority over all the other students. So students of National Open University are already being prepared for the job market to be independent on their own. That is why we em uh, emphasize the program of BSc Entrepreneurship. The need to revitalize the educational system and making it more responsive and globally competitive cannot be overstated. We're no longer talking about mechanics or carpentry or things like that. We are talking about creating the next Bill Gates, the next Dangote, the next uh, Mike Zuckerberg. You know, we are talking about people who are living with knowledge economy. So the best way to do is to de-emphasize the idea that a person can only make a contribution to the society if they have nine credits and emphasize the idea of social responsibility and social engineering through knowledge rather than through education. Because education is a structured, focused activity created by the government so that they can pay the labor market. And that's exactly the colonial mentality. British set of the schools not because they want us to be educated, but because they want to look, they are looking for clerks and they're looking for workers. But now we're in a knowledge-based economy. Most of those movers and shakers of modern economy were not formally educated, but they control the society. And that's exactly where we should be heading. Education is our launch pad to a more successful, more productive and more prosperous future. So the need to give it all the attention it deserves cannot be underplayed. A number of academic institutions are implementing innovative and sustainable initiatives aimed at revitalizing Nigeria's education system. In this regard, National Open University of Nigeria is garnering recognition for their commitment to equalizing access to tertiary education across the country. Now it's not a conventional university where you have a class. The students are socially engineered towards success. There's no lecturer to sit down in front of you and teach you. You learn at your pace, at your place, at any time you like. Making education accessible for all extends to incarcerated citizens, and through the Hope Behind the Bars program, the university aims to shift the focus of prison sentence from punishment to reformation. Currently providing over 500 inmates with access to 100% free education and tools for self-sustainment. We instituted a free education policy to all incarcerated uh, inmates in correctional centers throughout the Federation. The first choice of the degree program that they do is peace and complex studies. They can understand how they got into the, into the prison and how when they get out, they can prevent other people from getting into prison. A second choice for them is uh, security studies and then entrepreneurship. I remember one of our prisoners was on death row as she studied entrepreneurship. She said that she, she hopes that after she graduates, she will be pardoned. And when she comes out, she knows that people will not give her a job because she was a prisoner. But that entrepreneurship she has learned will enable her to make an independent contribution to the economy. And it's not just the inmates. All the university students are encouraged along the path of self-sufficiency through entrepreneurship training. This enables students to develop innovative ideas collaborate on problem solving, and create their own practical business initiatives. We have about five flagship programs that, that are targeted towards making you self-employable. In Noun, we insist that all our students have to do entrepreneurship course. This is at level 200 and level 300. And to us, the entrepreneurship course is not a lecture that you attend for two hours and uh, given to you in various uh, sectors. You have to present a business plan about what you're gonna do after they finish the university. And by the time you finish, you also participate in trade fairs with your products, the product that you do. To have given them enough skills. Once somebody believes in them and give them capital, no matter how little it is, they'll be able to do something useful with their lives. Undoubtedly, the university is contributing to the nation's increasing population of tertiary graduates. The recent executive amendment to their status and recognition from the National Universities Commission has validated their methods. But how well can their graduates compete against conventionally educated graduates? Every degree program in National Open University of Nigeria is accredited by NUC. The NUC has what they call benchmark minimum academic standards for quality assurance for teaching and so on. 
we decided to go higher. Students of National Open University are already being prepared for the job market to be independent on their own. With more initiatives supporting accessibility and entrepreneurship, Nigeria's education system is poised to experience a much needed revitalization that will improve statistics and foster national development.